Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to the Ellison Education video series. We are talking about folding today and that involves folding your paper before you cut, which allows you to create everything from shape books, magnet bookmarks, place cards, wreaths, and more. The key is folding the paper first. So I'm gonna take two sheets of construction paper, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I'm doing this because I wanna create a shape booklet. I want a booklet that's a monogram booklet for the letter of the alphabet D. I'll place the folded edge so that it is placed just inside of this blade. I want the fold intact so I can't cover that blade. I need, it needs to be exposed. I'm gonna put it into the Big Shot Pro with the blade sitting up and the cutting pad over the top. And then if I roll it through, you're gonna see how great this creates fabulous shape booklets. This happens to be the letter D. Wouldn't this be great for a Father's Day card? Look at the table in front of me. Look at all the other choices. Every alphabet letter, every decorative shape can become a shape booklet. Now that's cutting on the side. If you wanna cut on the top, look at this. All of these letters have been cut where the fold is on the top, which allows me to hang them on ribbon to create banners. If you look further up, you can also, cutting on the top fold, create all of these wonderful magnet bookmarks. Here is the heart bookmark. Let me show you how that's done. I'm gonna fold the paper, once again, folded in half. This time, I need to bring this up so that the blade is exposed on the top. My fold is on the top this time. The process is always the same. I'm gonna just roll it through. And you can see here is the fold. And because I didn't want this to show, I cut an extra heart out of black. If I open this up, you'll see here's that folded heart on the inside and the magnets that are gonna hold it shut in a book. Very easy and simple to do, folding on the top like this, or the first one that we did, folding on the side. Now the next fold that I want to show you is the bottom fold. If you look at the table, this place card is created by having the fold on the bottom. When I turn it to the side, you can really see that a little more easily. And if I tilt it up, there is the bottom. It's a nice section on the bottom that holds this whole thing steady. And the way that you do that is you start with, if you have a, a larger shape, you want extra long paper. I'm folding it in half, and then I'm folding in another fold along that middle, and I'm going to reverse that middle fold so that basically I have an accordion pleat right in the middle of my paper. So here you can see an accordion pleat in the middle. I'm gonna fold it up, and the placement of the fold is what makes it work. So if I slide this on the die, I want the bottom to remain folded intact. So I have to be sure that my blade is exposed so it can't cut through. Place it into the Big Shot Pro machine with the cutting pad over the top and then roll it through. And see the bottom there? If I poke that back out, now all I have to do is put a little bit of adhesive at the top. You could add extra candles if you want, but that easily and that quickly you have a place card. Now the next fold that I wanna show you is the one that we call the gate fold. Here is one gate folded card that's finished and it's called a gate fold because the two sides open like a gate in the middle. Instead of opening like a book from the side, it opens from the middle. You can take any shape, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. I happen to cut two of the pumpkins. And if I separate them, you'll see I have two pumpkins that I've already cut. The key is that they have to be aligned when you fold them. So here they are cut out and I'm gonna fold them and I'm purposely gonna fold them at an odd angle so that you can see it does not need to be a symmetrical shape. So here I have folded them together and now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna place adhesive on one half of my folded edge and position it on a gate folded piece of paper. And then I'm gonna put adhesive on the opposite half of the other folded pumpkin. I can make sure that they're aligned before I push down and attach that. 
so that when the card is gatefolded closed, it creates one completed shape, in this case, the pumpkin. And when I open it up, see, there's the other halves. Now you have this beautiful space inside. It would be great to write a report. It would be great to send home as an invitation. I've done the apple on the cover and sent them as invitations to back to school night. It's a very cool idea. The next fold that I want to talk about is what we call the accordion fold. You may think of it kind of as the paper doll fold because if you look at the table, you'll see that this is a really easy, quick way to do paper dolls. Basically, if you look, the folds are where the hands are connected and that creates the paper doll effect. We did the same thing up above with the snowman. I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing in this case with butterflies. In this example, you have to accordion fold your paper first and the placement of the folds, the size of the paper that you're using is important. It needs to relate to the shape you're cutting. So for in the case of the butterfly, I need for the blade to be exposed on this edge and this edge. So as I slide this down, you'll see that there is blade on both sides, which is what's going to keep this together. This way, when I open it up, all of those butterfly wings will be attached. So I'm going to place it into the Big Shot Pro with the cutting pad over the top. And then I'm going to just roll it through. And I, don't, I'm, I think I might be cutting through maybe six or seven sheets at one time just because I wanted extra long paper. So if you look at it, see how you end up creating this really fun look. And then if you want to, you can go back and cut the individual butterflies out and decorate it much like you see in this one. Now that's an accordion fold. We're gonna do kind of a similar accordion fold for what we call the stand-up. Here is an example of one that's finished and it's finished when it's all fastened together, it stands up and this is a great way. In this case, it features a report on the organs and there's different information on each of the sides. So here I'm going to take paper and I started with a sheet of construction paper and it needs to be folded into accordion pleats and you need eight sections. So basically you're gonna fold it in half, you fold it in half again and in half again and that gives you eights. Then go back and reverse fold until they're into accordion pleats. Once you have all the accordion pleats, you're gonna just bring the two ends together and flatten it like so. If you look at it from this angle, you can see this is where you're gonna cut the shape out. So it can be any shape. So in this example, I'll be using the apple. You need for the paper to completely cover all the blade. I want the folds to be on the outside. I want the whole shape to cut out of the middle. So I'm gonna take the apple and I'll place it fairly close to the top so I've got room for the report maybe on nutrition to be on the bottom and all the folds are off to the sides. I'm gonna then go ahead and I'll put it back in the machine and once again the blade needs to be facing up and then I've got the paper and then I have the cutting pad and I'm gonna go ahead and just the same way roll it through and you get not only the fun apple shape, but see how now it is in this format. Now you could fasten at these pleats together. If you put adhesive on every other fold, first you could do it and it would come out stuck together like this. But if you wanna dangle something in here, you need it not to be fastened yet. So if you look at the finished one here, that's what I've done. I waited to glue it so that I could add the dangling heart that's actually um, the organ in the very middle. Now the final two folds that I wanna show you are what we call the wreath folds. And when you look at the table, you'll see a couple of different wreaths and I wanna point your attention to the center. The opening in the middle of the wreath, in the, this case, is circular. And you'll see that it's the way that we place the paper that creates that style of opening. And then if you look at the dinosaurs, this time the opening is roughly a square. The paper's folded identically, it's just how you place it against the design. So we're gonna see how to do both. And we'll start with how to fold the paper. You need to start with a square. I'm gonna fold on the diagonal, fold it in half, and then fold in half again, and then fold in half again. You need to open it up enough to find the middle. Here's the middle of the paper. So the middle needs to be facing down. Here's the die, and in order to create 
an opening that is roughly circular, this needs to be in the middle of the design, like so. If I want this to instead read as a square type opening, I need to tweak this and turn this so that this folded edge is perpendicular to the design and it will create a square style of opening. We're gonna do both, so let's start. I'm gonna turn it over so my paper can go against the blade and I'll start with the circular type. So I wanna make sure I have this in the middle and then I'm going to place it onto the tray with the cutting pad sitting on the top, and then I'm gonna just roll it through. Might be cutting through six thicknesses. So see how if I bring it over here and open it up, this is larger than the apple that we saw, but notice that the middle opening from this really fun frame is basically circular. Now I'll take paper, and I used a different color just to make it more obvious, fold it identically. This is the bottom, this is the middle of the paper, so it needs to be the bottom. Remember, this will generate a circular opening, turning this so that this fold is perpendicular to the design, is going to create a more square opening. So I'm gonna put it back in the machine, and put the cutting pad over the top, and then just Roll it through, and I'll bring it over here. It's so much fun to play with different designs and just see what it looks like when you position the folds in different locations. Look at that. It's roughly a square, but with all these cool design to it. You know, who knew something as simple as paper folding and paper placement could result in so many different projects? Go figure.